guys, and welcome to another episode of How to Feed Yourself. So we're going to do something really fun this week. I'm going to show you how to make Funfetti cake. Um, so box mix is great, but there is something about making it from scratch and it, it's really easy, guys. Like I love box mix, don't get me wrong, but I also really just love making cake from scratch. I'm going to teach you a few of like the tips and tricks I've learned for making cake. Um, I usually do cupcakes, I'm not going to lie, because they're easier, because I can just buy cupcake liners, and it makes life so much easier. 100% recommend. After that is the sheet cake you just leave in the pan. But for the purpose of this, we are actually going to do a layer cake. So I have two cake pans, about the same size. Pretty sure they're about the same size. I think they're 9 inch, maybe 8 inch. Um, but I'm going to show you what I do to make sure they come out and that sort of, and are mostly level. We'll see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But to start, we are going to take parchment paper. And I'm actually going to put the pan on it. I want it fairly close to the edge because I hate wasting. And then I'm going to trace around the bottom with a pencil. Make sure I get all the way around. All right. So now I have a circle on my piece of parchment paper. Hang on a sec. I'll show you. So, yeah. so now I have a circle on my parchment paper that I'm just going to cut out. I'm actually going to cut a little bit inside the line I drew because it's okay if it's a little bit smaller than the bottom of the pan, but I definitely don't want it bigger than the bottom of the pan. So this is just providing me a basic guide. And this is honestly the only foolproof way I have learned to get cake to come out of a pan, like, doesn't matter how much I grease and flour it, sometimes it just does not want to come out. Alright, so now I have my circle. My circle fits inside of my pan. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one real quick. Alright, so now each pan has its own circle of parchment paper. I do each one individually and then try to keep it circle with it because in theory, these pans are exactly the same, but I'm not taking that risk. So now we are going to move on to actually greasing the pan. Let me, just, there we go. I'm gonna pull these out for the moment. And we're gonna start with this one here. So, I save old butter wrappers because it's the easiest way. I mean, there's, there's still, sometimes there's quite a bit of butter left on them. And I've discovered it makes really, really good thing for um, greasing cake pans. Especially there was a time period where it felt like I was baking something every other week, so I definitely hold on to these. Um, and you just, I mean, you want a nice layer of grease. I mean, if you don't have this, you can also use Crisco, Crisco or, you know, like, just vegetable shortening. Um, I've seen people who brush it on with a pastry brush, but I feel like that makes it a little too thick. You want enough there so that... It makes a, a good layer, like a nice thin, thin layer, but you don't want too much because then it might make your cake oily, but too little and your cake's not going to come out. So I just try to make sure I go over it really well and I will obsessively get in the corners so I use my fingertips to make sure to press it into the, the edge. Not corners. There's no corners in the circle. And then I'm going to get the sides pretty well. And I'll even get the rim because I'm not picky. And then sometimes, like, this is kind of running out of butter. I'll just go over to my stick of butter that I keep out and grab a little bit since I'm running low on my butter wrappers. And um, 
get a little more butter to work with. This is gonna work really well because the base cake for the cake I'm doing today is actually a butter cake recipe. I use it instead of just like a plain vanilla because I feel like sometimes vanilla cake that's not butter cake just doesn't quite have enough flavor. It, it can kind of be a little blah, but butter cake kind of gives it that richness it needs to hold, you know, have actual flavor. All right. So I've greased it pretty good. I mean, it's really nice and shiny. It's got a decent layer and I've gone over it several times to make sure I haven't missed any place, at least fingers crossed. So now I'm going to put our parchment paper down in. And I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out and shift it so that it's not curled up on the edges. So it's not creeping up the edges of the side of the pan and making little wrinkles or anything. And then I'm going to try to get as much of the bubbles out. I want it to kind of mesh with that layer of butter I just put down in there. It's not going to get oily. It's not really going to soak up the oil. It's just going to kind of adhere. And then I'm going to put a layer of butter over this. So it's buttered on both sides. I need a little more butter. And once again, I'm going to give it a good layer of butter all around, making sure it's just a thin layer, not too much, not too little. I'm not missing any spots. Also use this as another chance to get kind of all the bubbles out, make sure it's where I want it. Double check my sides and my edge. And then before we flour, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the other one. So I dabbed a little bit of butter in there already because I got a little much when I went to the pan. So we just repeat the process. I'm going to get a different one. Another one in here. It's my last one. I did a lot of baking a couple months ago and used up my store. So I'm going to have to start saving them again. not something you ever want to rush because again this is how we make sure the cake will actually come out of the pan in one piece because let me tell you it's very saddening when you go to take the cake out and it either doesn't come out or it comes out in pieces if it's not too bad you can fix it with icing icing covers a lot of sins but there's some that have not been recoverable and then those became cake pops because cake pops you just bake cake, crumble it up, mix some icing in, and then make make the shape. That's that's easy. That's a great way to use cake. That boo boo. But if you need if you need to layer cake, it's kinda hard to be like, um, it didn't come out, so I made cake pops instead of the layer cake you wanted for your birthday. I need more butter. I have them both greased to do flour because I have a little thing I do to save myself some effort. So I'm going to take, hmm, can you see that? A decent amount of flour. So some flour and put it in the bottom of one of my cake pans. It does not matter what, whether it's all purpose, self rising. Probably wouldn't use whole wheat because sometimes it's a kind of an off white color. If I was doing like a chocolate cake, I might do like cocoa powder instead of flour so that I don't end up with white 
on the outside of my cake. Um, but then I'm just, I'm shaking it around so it kind of covers the whole bottom. And then I'm gonna do this to just transfer it over. And I'm gonna go around, see if I can show you. So I just kind of scoot it around the edge to get the edges. Now if I had missed greasing spots, I would definitely be, I would be able to see it at this point because it would not stick. But it looks like I actually did a pretty decent job of greasing it and there's not big, a whole lot of big clumps sticking, so I'm doing good. But you want just enough flour to coat. You don't want a lot because it's gonna make your cake taste floury, even if you mix the cake batter well. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna hit it pretty hard to dislodge the flour. The parchment paper will not come off unless I really mess up. I've never had it happen before, but like knock on wood for me, would you? That doesn't happen now while I'm, you know, of course videotaping. This is another one of those times where I also get flour everywhere. But there is my floured cake pan. That's just about right. It's just got enough. There's no big clumps of it anywhere, really. So I'm going to do the same with the other one, but over the trash can now that since that one's floured, and then I will be right back. All right, so both pans are prepped and are set, setting off to the side while I mix the batter. I've set the oven to preheat to 350 for this recipe, and now we're gonna start mixing the batter. So we are going to start with two cups of flour. I'm just using self-rising because I have it and I like it. It's a few less things to measure out for me. If you don't have self-rising, you can definitely use all-purpose. Um, when I put it below, I'll give you the um, the baking soda, wait, not baking soda, baking powder and salt measurements for if you don't have self rising. If you do, just leave out the baking powder and salt. I'll make sure to leave that note in there as well. But since I have self rising, I'm going to use it. And I need two cups, like I said. I know that people are like scoops the flour in but I just kind of scoop the flour and then shake off the excess till it's kind of level. I we've had this discussion where my recipes are kind of exact but not super exact. I've not had too too much trouble. I'm sure if I were doing fancier stuff I'd need to be a little more exact but I'm not doing too bad so far so we're gonna keep doing this. All right, two cups of flour. Gonna be cleaning up flour all afternoon, but that's okay. And then I need one and a quarter cups of sugar. And I have limits as to how many measuring cups I'm willing to wash, so I'm going to use the quarter cup to measure out one and a quarter cup, so it's going to be five scoops of sugar with this because I'm not dirtying multiple measuring cups if I don't have to. I did the same thing I did for the flour. I just kind of scooped it, shook it to kind of level it, dumped it in. One and a quarter cups is good. Alright, and now we're going to put this in the mixer and I'm just going to stir it, put it on stir to kind of combine. Let me move that a bit closer for y'all. you can do some of this by hand but this is definitely a recipe you're gonna want to mix her for because it's about to get fun all right so it's kind of stirred 
stirred. So our next step whoop, is gonna be adding our butter, milk, and vanilla. So I need half a cup of butter, so I got a stick of butter. And this is softened. So if you're like me and you forget to get the butter out and put it on the counter ahead of time to soften, you can put it in the microwave for four seconds at a time and at flipping it in between until it starts to get soft. Just don't do too much or it will melt. Um, and you don't want melted butter, you want softened butter because it's about the way it incorporates into the batter. Oh, I almost threw that out. I'm gonna save that for next time I need to make cake. Stick it in my bag. All right. Vanilla. I've made this recipe so many times you would think I'd have it memorized, and yet I don't. One cup of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla. Both of my teaspoons are dirty because I've used them in cooking this week, so I'm just gonna use a half teaspoon and do it twice. You can, if you want, buy clear vanilla extract. Sometimes it's a little more. I think I found it at Walmart last time, like a big bottle of it. Um, especially if you're doing like a cake like this and you want it to be very light in color which I did one time when I was making it for somebody else, you'll want the clear vanilla because this will add just a smidge of color to your cake. Not a lot like to worry about, especially since it's already gonna be kind of yellow because of the butter. But I mean, if you were doing, cause I was doing it, I was doing it for a friend's wedding. So I, I used clear vanilla, so it looked better. And one cup of milk. Just gonna use the flour cup because it's all good. Again, the fewer dishes I have to wash, the better. And then we're gonna mix this until it's pretty well combined. Start low and then turn up. If you start too high right away, the flour will poof out in your face, trust me. So what I'm looking for is to make sure that my butter has kind of broken up. I can kind of see like little pieces of it, which is good. I don't want to over mix because then I'll end up with tough cake, but like you want to mix enough, but not too much. But we still have to add the egg, so I'm going to stop here for now. Um, if, so this is, a, this is my mother's KitchenAid and it's wonderful. I do love this, but it also is a little more powerful than some mixers. So you will have to adjust your mixing time sometimes, even when you're following a recipe, depending on the strength of your mixer. I remember our old mixer, I would have to follow it a little more exactly. So like this original recipe says to mix at this point for two minutes. With the old mixer, that would have been necessary to get everything mixed up. With this mixer, that would be too much time. That would over mix my batter. So just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I'll try to show you when we mix in the eggs what it should look like at that when it's you know looking right. All right, and this is not one where we have to add the eggs one at a time, so I'm just going to tip this back for a sec and crack these in. If I was making this for something fancy, I'd crack them in a bowl on the side, kind of like I did for, I think I did that for the cookies. Um, but this is mostly just for me, and I'm I feel pretty confident I can fish out an eggshell if need be. I say that as it does weird things. Uh -huh. 
See? I got overconfident. At least it was a big piece. I swear, these eggs I've been getting just want to crunch in the weirdest ways. I'm gonna have to dig out those tiny eggshells. This only ever happens when somebody else is, when I'm being watched. I'm just gonna very gently fish out eggshell. All right, now I really gotta wash my hands. I'm back. Let me. I went and grabbed a spatula too because I'm gonna need to scrape the sides. I'm gonna do that. And now we can mix the eggs. Again, we're not gonna start too fast. Not this time because of flour, but because I just get nervous. pockets of anything hanging out getting dry all right everything's looking pretty good but we're gonna mix a bit so that we can develop the gluten in the flour and get some air into the batter <laughs> This looks different than I remember, but I may be misremembering. I may have gotten it confused with a different recipe. But this should be good. So now we are ready to put it in our cake pans. Let me clear off the counter so I can move my pans over. All right, so I've got my cake pans over here, my batter. Um, if I have a thicker batter, sometimes I'll use like a scoop or something to distribute it in. I think this time I'm just gonna pour because if I have if I have to dirty one more dish, in all honesty. And I need my spatula. So I'm just gonna try and make it about even. Making sure to get all the batter because we do not want to waste any because it's no good stuck in the mixing bowl. sure it's evenly in because it's not right now I'm just gonna gently kind of tip a little and get it to all the edges because it is a fairly thick batter some batter is runny enough you don't have to do this that step but some of it you do need to um, and then 
we're gonna get some excess air out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it a couple inches over and drop. And do that about twice. So that's kind of to get some excess air out. It, I have found it helps it get level. You want that's another thing you kind of want to do enough, but not too much. Um, so hopefully it works this time because I think last time it did not work, but I might have overdone it. So now we are going to put these in. And silly me did not write a time, so we're gonna start. I'm gonna start with 15 minutes and see where we go. All right, so our cake is done. It actually took, I think, about 20-ish minutes with my oven today. Um, they're a little browner than I would normally like, so if it looks like it's browning too fast, you can always turn your oven down by about 25 degrees. It may take a little bit longer to bake, but then you'll get a lighter color. But also, I'm gonna cover it with icing, so I don't really care. Um, so you can tell your cake is done when one, <laughs> doesn't jiggle when you pull the oven rack out that's it that's a good sign and two you insert like a toothpick or I have I actually have a little little tester thing that I use for cakes you put it in the middle and if you pull it out and it's clean then your cake is done so now we're gonna let these cool I'm gonna let them cool five minutes then I'm gonna take them out of the pan put them back in the pan to cool the rest of the time you want to wait five minutes to start because if you try to take it out too hot, it's going to just fall apart. But you don't want to wait too long because otherwise then all that butter we put around the edges is going to cool and re-harden and then it'll not come out cleanly. So I usually wait about five minutes. I'm going to run a butter knife around the edge and then I have a plate. I pop it out real quick, pop it back in. And we're going to leave the parchment paper on because the parchment paper will stick to the bottom when it comes out, but we, we want to keep that on because that's going to help make sure it doesn't re-stick to the pan. But five minutes, then we're going to be popping these babies out. Alright, so it has been five minutes, so like I said, I'm going to use a pot holder because they're still very warm. Just going to gently run a butter knife around to make sure it has fully separated from the sides. It has, when I look at it, it does look like it's pulled away, but I am just so paranoid because I've had so many cake accidents that I just, I double and triple check everything. And then, this is if you're as old as I am or older, you remember when McDonald's had the Hercules plates. This is the last remaining one we have of those, but I have found it's the perfect size for getting the cake out of the pan because it just covers it. So we're going to line that up, and uh, this is always so toasty, so I'm going to grab that. I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna flip and ta-da! It came right out. You can see the parchment paper is still on, but I am want it to stay in the pan because otherwise it sticks to the plate I discovered if I let it cool on the plate. Plus I need to do the other one. So I'm gonna do the same with numero dos. I'm just gonna spin it. Let me clean that off. And go around the edge. Also, yes, I do realize I said we were making Funfetti cake and I forgot to put sprinkles in the batter. That was me having a moment. So we're, I, I do have sprinkles. I have lots of sprinkles. So we are just going to super duper sprinkle the outside when we go to ice it. So don't be me. You would have added the sprinkles just before you put the cake in the pans. You would have mixed them in by hand right before then. So, oop, yep, just heard that pop out. All good. We're going to stick it back in. And we're going to use this. I don't want burnt fingers today. All right, and then we are going to let these cool completely. So when I flipped it over, if it hadn't automatically popped off from the bottom of the pan, I would have gently tapped the middle of the bottom to help kind of encourage it. But these... Apparently, I greased and floured it just right today, so they popped out perfectly. But yeah, I'm just going to let them finish cooling completely in the pans, which can take... I usually just sit there and do something else for like the next hour. Usually, I'm cleaning the pans. I've actually already done that. I'm ahead of the game, but 
We'll let these cool completely and then we'll be back to make icing and ice the cake. All right? All right, so now that our cake has cooled, it is time to make our buttercream icing. So we're gonna start with two sticks of butter that I've let come to room temperature because I was smart and put them out when I was making the cake. Remember, save your butter wrappers for the next time you make cake and need a grease pan because these will definitely have some butter on them. I like to, when I start with the butter, go ahead and beat it so it's starting to get fluffy. Um, before I add anything else, I just think it helps a little. Scrape that off the sides. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And just like with the cake, if you wanted to make sure you had a really like light colored icing you could get clear vanilla especially like if you're gonna try and color it like a light color you're gonna want to make sure you do clear vanilla or it's something that will forgive the dark color of the vanilla extract so there's that and we're gonna go ahead at this point and add a pinch of salt the salt just kind of helps it because we do it's a lot of sugar in this this salt kind of helps keep it from getting too sweet. And I also use salted butter. I know a lot of recipes specify unsalted. I can go ahead and tell you for most of those, it does not matter because I've used salted and nothing bad has happened. For this, I actually honestly prefer it because again, the little bit of salt is gonna keep it from getting too sweet. Um, because, oh my gosh, is it a lot of sugar? Let's be real. I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in, I'm gonna start with about two teaspoons worth of milk. So the milk is kind of variable because it's just to help it not get too stiff so that I can spread it. Um, it's a fairly warm day today, so I think my butter is gonna be soft enough that it is not too much of a worry, but when we after we mix in the sugar we'll we'll see how it's doing and that's something you can kind of play around with So my butter, vanilla, and a little bit of milk are mixed pretty well. So now the fun begins. We get to start on the sugar. So I try to scrape it on the sides. It's a little warm today, so my milk, I'm not my milk, my butter is very melty. So it's probably gonna be easy to get a nice spreadable consistency, which is good, but it also means it's a little messy. So, to make icing, you need powdered sugar. Powdered sugar makes the world's most awful mess. No matter what I do, I end up with powdered sugar everywhere. So you're gonna wanna add it one cup at a time. Um, I never can have a good way of getting this in here. I'm just gonna pour it. Usually I leave this bag inside the Ziploc and I scoop it out where it can't make as much of a mess, but we're getting towards the end of this bag. So it's a little less than a cup, but it's a good start. And we're just starting on low, because like flour, this will go everywhere. We're gonna mix this in. Okay. 
And you will have to, I have to stop and scrape because it likes to collect at the bottom where the butter is not. So stop and scrape, mix some more. Before you add more powdered sugar, you want to make sure it's all fully incorporated, so no dry bits. So I'm going to turn that back on. a dab left in the bag so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that because that's probably what was missing from the first cup and once again start on low and gently mix it in very long process of continually doing this until it's done essentially. Um, the number of cups tends to vary. I'm thinking this is probably going to take about four-ish cups of powdered sugar just from the looks of it and so that I have enough to cover the cake. Um, but we'll see. flour, I usually end up with powdered sugar everywhere every time I do this. And close enough. one more cup of sugar and then we'll see how the consistency is and if I eat, need to add a little more sugar or if I need to add some milk and I have icing all over my hands yay me I really don't think it's possible to over mix it. It just gets fluffy. It's a beautiful thing. All right, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Rory! This is why it pays to have a dog. Rory, down, down there. Can you? Yeah, that's not enough for her to notice. Oh, wait, no, there she is. Good girl! Lick up the sugar. I'm gonna regret that later. Alright. Let's see how this goes. So I will tell you when it, I first turn on the mixer for these, especially these last couple of cups, 
it looks like it is not gonna incorporate. It looks like it's too dry. Just wait until you turn it up because it will incorporate. It just kind of has to get, the sugar just kind of has to get smashed in, essentially. stiffness so it's not too soft but it's got it's got some it's got some firmness to it but it's not so stiff that I'm struggling like when I scrape the sides and everything I'm not really having to struggle um, because if you try to ice a cake with too stiff of icing it just rolls off which is not fun and then you tear up your cake trying to get it to stick because you're stubborn and you're like it's gonna go on there and it won't not that I'm talking from experience. Um, if I were decorating with this, if like I was gonna put it in like a bag and pipe it onto a cake or cupcakes, I'd probably add a little more sugar because I'd want it a bit more stiff for that so that it would hold its shape. But this is a good spreadable consistency. And I decided since I forgot to put sprinkles in the cake, we are going to put sprinkles on top of the cake and I'm also gonna color the icing. So let me pick some colors. So I have gel food coloring. I like it better than the liquid because liquid food coloring then I would have to compensate for the liquid I added in here, I probably would have added less milk or something or just not added milk if I had added liquid food coloring. But gel food coloring, I don't really have to compensate for. So let's see, I have rainbow sprinkles because they're fun. So what color do I want to do? I mean, I've kind of got all of them in there. What's this month? This month is May. Just kidding. Purple's my favorite color. We're gonna do purple. So now... So to do gel food coloring, you kind of need a toothpick. And what essentially you do with it... And this stuff lasts like forever. This looks a little funky. Because, I mean, well... I say it lasts forever. There's no expiration date on this, so. Mild concern, but I haven't poisoned anyone with it yet, and I'm probably gonna be the only one eating this cake, so. Anyways, I digress. So, I'm just gonna dip the toothpick in to get some of the gel on it, like so. And then I just drag it through the icing so that it gets it off. Um, I know Wilton sells kits and they'll tell you like exactly how much to do for certain colors, but we're going to do this and see how it looks and if I like that color. So now we're just going to mix this in. <laughs> purple but it's also kind of streaky so let's let it finish oh there's where all the purple color is let's let it finish and we'll see what color it turns out because I put a good bit in there 
you would normally, if you weren't sure exactly, like, kind of what shade to do, start with a little, then work your way up, but this I don't care what color really it turns out, as long as it's somewhat purple, so I just went for it, because that's my life motto, just do it at this point with the cake. <laughs> right there why will you not mix in it's not without its faults let, let me let me be clear so takes patience to color icing it takes patience to color cake better too it's a little bit easier it's a little more liquid but gonna be very confusing for my family. They're gonna look at this cake and be like, what kind of cake did you make? Surprise cake. That's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna start low and see if that helps. I'm seriously, why is it all up the side? Don't do that. That's a good way to get your thing. <laughs> lavendery color. Um, I think I want it a little more vivid. I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood for a little bit more of a vivid color, so we're gonna add a smidgen more. Or do we want to experiment? Because I could add a little red. I make almost a red violet. That sounds... We're not gonna, we're not gonna be crazy. I don't want to scare people. All right, so we gotta get a clean toothpick because the other one's covered in icing. And it's the same process. Get some on, toothpick. Just smash it in. I also find that the gel food coloring doesn't make it bitter as easy, so there's a little more room for playing with the amount. Um, I will warn you, red and black, if you're trying to dye cake or icing those, it almost always ends up bitter to get a vivid color, so just a warning. The only exception is if you do chocolate icing black because it's already such a dark color, that's a little easier. like a lightish gray color. Just gonna make sure it's all mixed through, but this is about good to go. So I like the color, I like the consistency, and this should be pretty well aerated at this point. I have icing everywhere because that's how this always ends up being. All right. ready for us to ice the cake. All right, so now we are ready to assemble and ice our cake. So I'm actually gonna put just a tiny, actually no, I'm not gonna do that. Some people put a tiny dot of icing there to help hold the cake layer there. It makes me a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Just in case I have to adjust the cake layer on, I've got a little cardboard thing. You can also use a plate. I have 
so many of these for making, I, I make a lot of cake for people. So I have a lot of these, so we're gonna use this. Um, and then I'm just gonna pick the most even looking of my layers. They turned out pretty good, but that one's got a little bit of a slip because I think that was the one I tested first when they weren't quite done. So I let out a little air. I'm just gonna pat that out. And voila. Pull off the parchment paper and ta-da, we have cake. So again, just gonna make sure it's fairly even. I'm actually gonna take this, flip it. Cause I decided I wanted that other edge as the bottom. So at this point, we're just going to put a little bit of icing for between our layers. So this is an actual like, I don't know, icing spatula, whatever they call it. You can use a butter knife. Again, I have a lot of these things just because this is something I do frequently. As a matter of fact, my mother used to decorate cake, so that's why we have a lot of this stuff. But you can just use a butter knife, that's fine. Just, when you're doing this, put a little more than you will think you need. You want a decent amount between your layers, but not too much. You don't want to overpower the cake. And then you're just gonna start and gently spread. Getting all the edges. Don't do weird angles. You want it fairly perpendicular to the cake surface. And nice sort of smooth and firm motions. It's okay like if it comes over the edge or if you leave a little bit of a gap because we, we're gonna go and fix that later. Actually need a little bit more. Get everything covered fairly evenly. So, now I'm just going to kind of even this up a bit. It's okay if it's a little thinner towards the edges because those will get filled in when I go around and do the sides. Just trying to make sure I've got everything pretty well. All right, I'm gonna dab just a smidge right there. That is good. Now we are ready to put our other layer on. So I've got my trusty Hercules plate again. So I'm gonna pop this out. All right, so essentially I just picked it up, lined it up, and sort of set it. Sorry, my phone's running out of storage, so it keeps interrupting me. We're gonna have to kind of hurry. So now, we are going to ice the rest of the cake. I want as much icing as possible on this, so I'm just actually gonna do this. Because what I, I'm going to spread it over and then go around the sides. I will admit, I do, ooh, it's a little stiff. I might have a little much. I don't do layer cakes too often. I usually do cupcakes because I have a giant icing tip and it just, I just do a swirl and it's done. It's beautiful. But we're going to do layer cake. I will master this, hopefully. Don't want that bit because that's got crumbs in it. I'm just gonna try and, nope. It's a little stiff. So it is, <laughs> unfortunately, peeling up my cake if I go back. So I have to do one nice motion like that. We're gonna cover it up with sprinkles, right? We're gonna cover it up with sprinkles. Because, um, apparently, I did not get my consistency quite right. For the most part, people don't care as long as it tastes good. I'm just going to go ahead and comfort you and myself with that. And I remember now why I really hate doing layer cake. Sheet cake's always easier because you just slap it on there. Slap it on there. But we're going to do our best. I'm 
try and take some of this off the top because I got it on there pretty thick. sides as best we can. There is also a reason for a crumb coat. This is it. Once again, don't do crazy angles with whatever you're using to ice. Just nice and even with the cake. At least it's not peeling off the cake. I think the last time I tried to do a layer cake by myself, it just, I kept trying to ice it and it just kept peeling off the cake and it would tear the cake and it was not fun. I eventually called my mother for help and I was like, can you please get me, help me ice this stinking cake? So I'm gonna work on finishing this and then we will meet back when it's done. All right, so the cake is iced. Um, there are crumbs in the icing. Um, so what I did was I kind of just went around and played with it. I did reserve a little bit to kind of fill some gaps. So I've gone around, checked and made sure I've not missed any gaping spots. It's not the prettiest icing job, but it's also not the worst I've done. Again, the time when the icing was just curling off the cake was a very bad day for all of us. Now, if I wanted this perfectly smooth, what I could do is I could do well, one of two things. I could have a cup of hot water and using my spatula, because it's nice and smooth. Butter knife, you'd probably have middling results. What I would do is I would dip it in the hot water and then run it just over, wipe it off, dip in hot water, do it again until it's nice and smooth. Or Viva Paper Towels, they have one that has like no lines or anything on it. It's just, it feels like cloth almost. You put that on, you sort of smooth it over, gently peel it off, smooth cake. It's a beautiful thing or you cover it with fondant. That's another way to get a smooth looking cake. But we're gonna cover it with sprinkles so it doesn't matter that it's got a good bit of texture and some crumbs in it. So I did buy these, but since it turned out kind of a pastel, I found some like spring colored sprinkles that we have. So I am going, I think, to use these. Now we're just gonna use the other ones. These are easier if I can get it open. All right, so fancy people would stick this cake in the freezer for a bit, then pull it out and you could almost like roll it in it. That freaks me out so much, even just watching it. So we are just, and I'm gonna be cleaning up sprinkles ever so gently. We're just going to kind of press, press it in. And this is a recipe for having sprinkles everywhere. It is A-OK. -okay. It's going to be a happy cake. If I was smart, I would have done this on like a sheet pan that has edges to catch it. But I'm not smart. We've already discovered this. I'm just joking. Mostly. Occasionally my brain skips things. All right, I'm just gonna kind of gently press it in. So the top is good. And then I think, let's, let's try this. Let's try just kind of gently. Okay, so just taking a handful and gently pressing it apparently does not work. I may have made the icing a little too stiff. So, which explains a lot of the cake problems I've had. And also this. So we're just going to clean this up. We're going to call what's on top good. And that's going to be the piece I eat so nobody knows what I tried to do. See? See, when you're just making cake for fun, it doesn't matter. Alright, so that is it for now, especially before I run out of space on my phone again while I'm recording this. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a little bit of a disaster towards the end, but I think we did pretty good. And hey, there's cake. So, y'all have a great day and I hope to see you soon. Bye guys!